hello everybody welcome back to the channel thank you for joining today i'm going to be showing you how to draw 3d column footing in autocad architecture so in the previous video i showed how to draw 3d custom columns and so this video is somewhat a continuation off of that video so if you missed it definitely check it out link in the description below all right so if this is something you want to learn and see how i go about doing this then let's go So here we are back in AutoCAD architecture and in the previous video I showed you how I go about creating 3D custom columns in AutoCAD architecture as you can see here on my screen. So if you missed that video most definitely go back and watch it. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to go about creating column footing in particular pad footing so it's again a pretty simple process once you know how to use the tools and just to get exactly what you need all right so the column footing that we'll be looking at uh, i have them in an image right here so we have the simple pad footing that looks like this and then we have this step footing like this one which i'll be showing you how to do as well as this slope footing which is this one and then we also have this uh, circular cylindrical footing so these are the four that i'll be focusing on but again if i show you how to do this one i'm pretty sure you'll be able to manipulate the tools to get the others but i'll be doing them nonetheless um so let's get into it now the first thing is to open up your drawing set up your units and all of that and then we would get right into it now that you already know how to create a 3d column i won't be going back through that i'll simply go to my style browser and just pick a column that is already in here so i'm gonna go to structural columns all right so here i have a pretty simple column i'm going to extend the steel a little bit all right so this is what we have working with for our column so the first thing we're going to do is to create a column footing which is a simple pad footing all right now of course we could go ahead and use the box tool all right what we can do is to create the box tool and to just create a box in the shape of the footing in terms of size height width length and everything that we need so we could specify that over here um we could do that but then it would not appear in the way we want it in terms of the uh, uh the line wouldn't be hidden in in autocad you want to make sure that your foundation is showing up as a hidden line when it is below grade all right so we wouldn't have that effect here unless we went into the display properties and make some changes but to cut long story short we're going to use the easier method of course which would be to go into our tool palette right here content browser and go to imperial and up here just type foundation i have used it before so it is it appears in my drop down if you if not we can actually search for it here walls concrete and if we go across here we would see foundation all right so we'll just insert it and just like the box tool it operates the same way you would enter the size footing that you need all right i i would presume that at this point you would know what size footing you desire to put on your project in this case we're going to be putting a let's see that's a one foot column so let's make this uh yeah let's make this a two foot by two foot by 10 inches thick and i'm gonna drop it right in the middle there there in the dead center make it a zero rotation and that would be what that looks like if you notice it comes in hidden line um, let me scale this down some more all right so that's what it looks like now if you notice it is above the zero line so of course we would need to drop our elevation to the same depth or height so it would be minus 10 here and that would drop it just below the column so that's what the pad footing would look like and of course if we wanted it to be a deeper footing it is a matter of simply dragging this uh, arrow down to whatever depth we need it to be all right guys so that's simply how that is done now if we wanted to do the step footing of course it's a matter of recreating all of this so all i'm gonna do here is to copy this 
12 feet over. All right, so here we go again. We have the same uh, thing here. Let me X that off. And I'm going to go to the front view this time. In fact, let's split the screen so we can see a couple of different angles here. So that's the regular one that we just did. This one will be the new one. And we're doing the step footing. All right. And by this time, you would see, you would determine um, what size each step is going to be. So for this case, I'm going to be having three steps and they're going to be at a six inches uh, increment. So the depth here would be minus six and the height would be six. And I think I already have a six inches on both sides here already. Let me measure that. Right. So I need the next one to be another six inches out. So I'm going to basically be copying this this one down one more and another one and I'm going to increase the size of this to be three feet by three feet and it remains at the same six inches there and then this one I'm going to increase the width and depth which would make it four foot by four foot and so it is as simple as that when we're creating a step footing and this is how it would look from plan view just the way we need it to look using the same foundation tool now this footing or this type of footing is also recognized as a mass element all right and that's fine um, it has the visibility settings inside of it that would allow it to appear in a hidden line uh, when we go from a plan view perspective all right so that's how we basically want our columns to appear all right now let's move over to the sloped footing so again i'm going to be copying this column and i need another 12 feet all right so i'm going to be adding uh, another footing here i need this footing to be 30 by 30 and i want the height to be six inches and then i'm going to be dropping it in the dead center here again all right so i have that portion and i'm going to drop this down about a negative 12 inches so if you notice it goes down beyond the surface of the column here and that's because i'm leaving that space here to put my slope all right so here we're going to be creating what is called a pyramid that has two surfaces one at the top and one at the bottom all right so what we're going to do is to type the command pyramid so p y r a so this command gives us the option that we need so this is what the one that we're going to use so click on that and then we are going to be placing the center point of this pyramid which would be right in the middle there and then from there we are going to type the radius in this case it would be uh, to the edge of this box which would be one foot and three inches all right click and so far on the right side you can see the pyramid being formed uh, at this point we could type the height in but we don't want to type the height in as yet we actually want to put a top radius in so let's click on top radius and now we can enter how uh, wide we want that top radius to be in this case we're going to make it the same as the column itself which would be six inches we could type it in all right and then now we have the option to type the height in and again we want the height to be six inches all right so now we have this pyramid shape here as you can see from top this is what it looks like conceptual all right but it is not sitting where we want it to be at let's click on over here we're gonna drop the the elevation which would be the z position minus six enter and as you can see the bottom radius is a little bit too wide i'm not sure how that became um, but let's change it here it should be one foot three inches all right so that looks good and now it looks the way we need it over here all right so that's how that slope footing would appear now if you click on this object you realize that it is a 3d solid so how do we change it over to be the same as the the footing itself down here all right let's do that so what we would do is to click on it again and we would right click and say convert to a mass element and then from there it will ask you if you want to erase that geometry of course i'm going to say yes and we're going to hit enter so now it is a mass element but it is still a different style from the one below so what we want to do is to change the style to the foundation style okay so switch it over to foundation and now if we go to our top view it would now appear with that foundation style and that is exactly how we want that footing 
to look. Let's do the last one, which would be a cylindrical footing. And I'm sure you can guess by now <laughs> how to do that. All right, we're going to copy this over another 12. If you notice, I'm basically just using the same column. Um, you would definitely go ahead and put the, the column of your choice in that spot and make it your own all right so in this case what we're going to do basically is to use the box tool again click on the cylindrical uh, option and simply give it the height and radius and whatever we want here i'm going to make the radius uh nine inches for this one and uh, let's make the height about uh, 36 all right something like that i'm gonna drop it in the dead center here and zero rotation and that's what it looks like i'm gonna make the elevation minus 36 so that it drops right below and then we can now change it over to the style of the foundation so if you notice it even takes on the hatching in there now for some reason when we change this over to foundation it does not give me the dotted lines that we would have for like these ones over here uh, when i do circles um, I don't know why, but <laughs> we'll work with it. I think it has to do with something in the visibility or display settings, which I haven't gone to figure out as yet. But that's how we would go about getting the various types of column footing. So if I rotate this in uh, conceptual and 3D, this is what they would look like. I think this could be a little bit wider. Though. Let's make this like 12 that looks better all right so that's what these would look like i did actually draw them already over here and i also did connect them together so of course we have what is called a combined strap or cantilever footing where if columns are close by together um, it might be structurally beneficial to connect them in such a way so that they can be more stable all right likewise we have this one which is more of a combined rectangle all you do is to combine both footing uh, straight across like that and so it is just one huge footing all right so depending on the design that you're doing either or either or neither <laughs> may be necessary but uh, it's just to show you how these work um, for this cantilever one it's basically the same tool that i use which is the foundation tool that we used for the footing itself so it's a matter of just resizing it and stretching it out so that it fits within both columns all right and of course if you were to place your columns on uh, on grids um you know it would look something like that and again, if we were to place it in an actual drawing, which I actually did over here um, on this very same drawing that I showed you in the last video, um, it would look something like that. And of course, uh, this would be in the foundation construct. So if I go to my X reference panel, you can see that I have my foundation construct there. Um, the footing is loaded into that construct as well as my columns would be in a separate construct by themselves. So that's that guys so that's basically how simple it is to create column footing all right so that's it for this video today i hope that you learned something if you have your questions your comments just drop them in the comment section below and if you learn something new you definitely know what to do already drop a like and also subscribe if you haven't as yet big up to the patrons on my patreon page over there if you didn't know now you know check the links in the description below if you want to learn how to draw walls in autocad or if you are interested in seeing how a roof is done in autocad then check these two videos out and i hope that you have fun Be love yourself